Hello, welcome to another episode of Progress, Not Perfection. My name is Dan Wilcox, and today I thought we would do uh, my version of what I call uh, Let Out of the Woods. It was actually named by a friend of mine, and this is my version of a painting that Dana Jester did on Bob Ross's show on PBS, The Joy of Painting, episode uh, 10 of season 27 is when Dana did this. So you can see his version and it's spectacular. If you go to Bob's YouTube channel and uh, go down to the full seasons and pick number 27, go to episode 10. And Dana was one of Bob's very, very best friends as I understand it and a spectacular uh, painter in this method and still does teaching. Um, I would love to take one of his classes one day. I hope, uh, I hope he'd be pleased with my version of this. Um, let's jump in and let me tell you what I've got started. Uh, colors we're going to be using today, pretty limited palette, and I do always uh, seem to enjoy the limited palette. Titanium white, midnight black, I snuck in some dark sienna, we may or may not use that. That's Van Dyke brown, alizarin crimson, and yellow ochre. Now what I've done to prepare the canvas already, this is a 16 by 20, uh, regular Bob Ross canvas, so it was uh, primed uh, from the factory with that light gray tinted acrylic. I then covered it with a coat of uh, black gesso. I can show you what that looks like. just comes in a bottle just like this. And that's Bob's black gesso. So I painted that quickly with a foam brush just to get an even coat of black on there. Let that dry. Excuse me, let that dry this morning. It only takes Oh gosh, probably 20 minutes at most. I flipped the ceiling fan on, it dried pretty quick. Then on top of that, I put a very, very thin coat of liquid clear. I think Bob says, I can't remember what episode it is, but he says one jar of liquid clear will just about last you your lifetime. Well, this is one I keep on my uh, work area here at the home studio, and he's not kidding. As long as you put the lid back on it, that stuff, boy, it seems to last forever. I've had that, that jar a long time now. Onto the liquid clear, I did a mix here on the palette of some Van Dyke Brown and Alizarin Crimson. Eh, if I had to put numbers on it, it was probably about two-thirds made up of brown and just a little one-third of the crimson made a little pile. And just put that around most of the canvas. It's it's not here in the middle or maybe right some of this this area here because that's where a lot of our light's going to be. So I'm just going to make myself up a, uh, a, a color that we're going to make some uh, kind of a distant far off light. And so I'm just going to take some titanium white and to that I'm going to add some yellow ochre. Now you can make your light color any color you like if you don't really care for the yellow ochre. Make yourself up something else. Indian yellow is a beautiful color. The cad yellow is fantastic. I like this one. It's what Dana used in the show, and that is good enough for me. So let's just dive in and see where we go. So I'm going to pick up quite a bit of paint for this one because we're going to put the light source way off in the background. And this is pretty cool. Dana describes this as looking like a candle flame every time he does this. And boy, it just makes so much sense to me. I kind of see that as well. And I don't know if it's been times I'm daydreaming, kind of when I'm driving, or when I'm actually dreaming, sleeping at night. But I have just... This painting has been on my mind a lot, and I used to paint it quite often, and I really, I have not painted this one in quite some time, and today felt like the day to do it. So I'm going to start listening to those messages as they come, and I'm just working out towards the color. I'm going to go a little wider than I probably really think I want it. You can start seeing maybe right here on the edge it's picking up some of that color. This is going to be a deep in the woods kind of scene. We'll either have a path or maybe some water. Oh heck, maybe we'll have both. 
I picked up a little of that color. I like to keep a paper towel handy here on the palette just so I can, can wipe that right off. Let's grab some more of that light color we made. Start back in the middle so it's going to layer up like light for us. And I'm going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to start having this light zinging through this woods in different directions. So let's get a little more coming this way till we really kind of hit some color over here. I'll take it a little further this way as well. There we go. Now while we got that going, let's put some, some light down here at the bottom as well. So maybe there's some reflected light. Oh, coming straight down. And you may say, oh, Dan, you have done it this time, my man. You have really messed that up. Well, you may be right. You may be right. Let's see. Let's give it a chance first, though. So we know we want this to be a path of some kind. So let's just real gently path, water. I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but start narrower out there where it's further away and just go wider as we get closer. There we go. We'll do something with that. We'll do something with that a little later. Oh, let's bolden this bright part up a little. Again, I want that brightest part in the middle. So I go back there with a clean brush and start each pass there because I don't want to drag color back into that light area. There we go. That's enough. That's enough of that. Oh, let's use that same old brush. We'll just pick up a little color and let's just kind of here and there kind of dance in some light playing through our forest here also. Oh, we'll have it come down to about there or so. Same thing, other side. Need some on this side. There we go. Now let's get a clean, clean dry brush. And I'm just using one inch brushes. This is what I've got handy. These are just Bob's regular landscape brushes. I do put some masking tape on there just so these, uh, uh, fairings, the gold, the brassy kind of looking collars don't uh, reflect the bright lights I've got here in the, the studio like crazy because that could really, uh, it does some interesting flashes on the camera. But just with some quick crisscross strokes, just want to soften these. Now just softening them out, they kind of look like, I love Dana's description he says on the show, well, if you need to wear glasses, it feels like you need to put your glasses on. That's kind of how blurry this light, light part gets back here. And boy, that just makes so much sense to me. I love that description. I have my glasses on and I still feel like I may, it's a little blurry. So, so that is okay. I think that's funny. Just a gentle blend here on the side. If you'll be gentle, you can blend even if you got a little color in your brush. The cleaning procedure really is as fun as Bob makes it look on TV. But if you just whack your brush on the easel in your studio or in your living room, you are going to make a mess. And I'm not that brave to test my wife's patience. I did that, done that too many ways over the years. And I'm not going to add that to the list. She's a wonderful lady. <laughs> and, uh, well... I'm smarter than that in my old age now. So let's take a step back, see what we got. Yeah, I'm digging what we got going on here. I'm going to put a brighter spot right in the middle of that. So I'm just going to take some straight white. Oh, we can use really any brush we want. I don't want much color on my brush. So let's just clean out that one inch brush we were blending with. Let's pick up most of that titanium white I just moved over there and just here in the middle. And you can only go over that a couple times because that yellow will just grab that white underneath, which is exactly what we want to have happen. And just dance in kind of some sparklies. Now, one thing I really like to see happen 
in a wood scene like this are the, the shooting kind of light rays, if you will. And that's easy enough to do. Most of this will get covered up, but we'll know it's there. So I just picked up a little bit of that white, and I'm just going to go out at an angle with a little different pressure in my hand each time, thinking from a centralized light source somewhere here, and just kind of working its way around. And again, we won't see most of this. A lot of this will get covered up. A few of these will zing through, and we'll see them. And that's just good fun. So I'm just pulling a little titanium white. I'm being super gentle. I'm going fast on purpose. These seem to go straighter and better, more naturally, if you just do them quickly. Just go for it. Because even if we didn't like it, then we would just blend it out or cover it up with a tree or something like that. Oh, Bob's so right. Just go for it. You can't make a mistake doing this. Just work with whatever happens on your canvas. And I do a lot of demos, and I really enjoy so many of the conversations I have with people. I stop by, and they enjoy watching Bob's show still to this day like I do. And, you know, those are often the people that stop by or the, the ones that that are Bob fans and the ones who don't either like painting or don't like me or don't like Bob for whatever reason, just sort of keep on rolling. And that's so great. And the comment, one of the comments I hear so often, and it kind of breaks my heart is people are like, Oh, I could never do that. I can never, I can't even draw a stick figure. Well, instead of trying to kind of give them a little pep talk and explain to them how this is just a process and tell them the whole story of how I'm not artistic and Lori and I took a class. It was July of 2020. Today is January 25th, 24. So I've been doing this for three and a half years. It's just a process anyone can learn. I've learned it. Rather than give them that sales pitch, talk, sell them on them, I'll just say to them, well, you're probably right. You probably can't do this, but do you think you'd like it if you could? And it just sort of, it seems to be hitting people a little different. And man, I like that. I try to turn that on myself. And, oh, it just, it can, it, it can just stretch your brain, kind of stretch your mind on oh, all sorts of things. So let's keep on going. Let's put some distant, distant trees in there. I'm going to switch over and start using a little bit of an, an oval brush. I want to get just a little bit of black moved over and put it with some of the uh, titanium white. Midnight black is not black like a jet black or um, ebony black. It really is a beautiful, deep, deep purplish kind of color. And to help with distance on this size canvas, I'm just gonna put some distant branches off there that would be getting more light, and we'll build a few layers on this. So I'm just gonna tap in, pick up a nice, Kind of coverage here and let's just start way out here we'll just kind of kind of touch in and see what we're getting and just putting in the indication a lot of this isn't going to show very boldly and that's totally fine because this is just 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 a distant layer and i'm just touching just touching and letting those bristles bend a little bit for me no sliding here no sliding at all on this stage Let's take a step back, take a look and see what we're getting. You can't see that much on the screen, and I know that, so just bear with me. We'll be building some layers in here. I'll make a few that are darker so you can see them, I hope. But I don't want to go back and touch too often, because that could really foul up and just sort of mush out our color. So we're not going to do that. So we're just pulling some in. Just pulling in a few layers there. I like that. So let's rest this way. Let's, 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 let's sneak in some super low uh, bushy things over here. And I'm going to do a similar kind of thing. I'm going to take just a bit more of the crimson, just a bit, and go over here to that light color that we used to do the light part, the lightest part, the sunlight kind of off in the distance. And I just want to soften this down 
and make a, a soft, 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 soft pinky color. And I'm just going to turn my brush vertically this time and just touch. I'm just going to touch. Just touch. It's going to be a super soft, super soft, light pinky color. And I just am putting the idea, just the idea, just a little bit of an idea of some ground coverage, some little bushy things down here. And I don't know about you, sometimes the path tends to get a little dark. I think the key to that is just keep going. All right, so we got a little of that in there. Now, before we get too crazy and, and coming forward on us, let's put in, let's put in some trees, at least the idea of some trees. So I'm going to take just a regular fan brush. I'm going to grab some brown, some Van Dyke brown. I'll grab a little bit of black just to darken it up some. And these trees will be pretty, pretty far away. So that's, that's okay. And we just decide where our tree is going to live and just, just pull that tree in there. Maybe it's got a, a friend that lives real close to it, or heck, maybe this is a, a tree that got split by something early on in its life, and now it lives kind of like that. Sometimes I get a little heavy-handed up near the top of my trees, and so I just want to Go back and make sure I've got the fatter part of the tree near the bottom than I do at the top, because I don't know a lot about specific trees, but I do know trees tend to grow fatter at the base than they are at the top. And you can really do as many of these trees as you want. Let's put one on the other side, at least one, maybe two. And maybe this one grows. A little curve. Now, as you come through the light, it's going to pick up some of that color automatically. You don't have to do anything. Maybe these cross. We can take a clean, relatively clean uh, one inch brush and just super, super gently, super gently just pull over those. That'll just help set them back in the distance because these aren't the super close ones yet. And where you've had other paint, just be gentle or you're going to drag all that up with you. So don't do that unless that's what you want to do. Just super gently, just a little, just a little to set it back there. Just a little, just a little. All right, now we're just going to keep working forward. Just going to start putting in a little bit darker. So we'll add a little more um, wrong brush. If you've ever done that, that'll make you say funny words sometimes. So <laughs> I went with my pink brush into the black. Not what I meant to do, so I've wiped out that black. <laughs> Oops. And we'll just do some darker, just a little different layer of some of these. Nothing wrong with that at all. No, nothing up my sleeve. A little more pink. Well, crimson to make this pink with that yellow. And just, just don't cover up all the stuff you did before. No reason to do that. There we go. We'll just set these in. Now these will be on this side of that tree, obviously. Kind of plants the foots of those trees for us a little bit. And just starts giving us some action. Some other things happening down here in the woods. Isn't that cool? Darker, darker, darker as we get over here to the side, because less light would be hitting over there for sure. So let's just take a look. Yeah, that's turning out okay. All right, now let me actually go to the brush I meant to pick up a second ago. Let's just pick up a little more of that black. We'll do one more layer off in the distance, and then we'll put in some some tree branches and maybe make the darkest side for us right here on this side. So I'm just tapping, just tapping, just tapping. And I just want to not repeat by any means, but just kind of just follow the pattern. I just, I, all I think about is if I were walking in the woods, what would it look like? 
don't get all twisted up about this. You've never walked out to the forest and looked up at a tree and said, that tree does not look like it is exactly done with the shadows and the light coming towards it. No, you, you haven't done that. No one has done that in the history of the world. So do not stress over that in your painting. I used to worry and think, oh, I don't know anything about light and color and oh, thank God I stopped that sort of thinking. And I'm just adding more black as I get out here towards the sides. All I'm doing is being aware, leave some of the lighter areas. You need the dark to show the light and the light will always win. So the, the more interest you leave out there in your forest, the more layers you're going to have, uh, you're going to like it. You're going to be happy. And I want you to be happy. I want you to keep painting. Oh, this should be fun. This should take away the things that are bothering you. Whatever keeps you up at night. Oh, give yourself the gift of this style of painting. Get some stuff. Paint at home. See, we don't even have a tree over here, but we're going to have some branches. Just because my canvas ends doesn't mean the trees in the forest do, does it? No, not at all. Not at all. Just the idea here. But see how leaving some of those, oh, it just looks, it already looks like we're way, way, way deep, deep, deep out in whatever this, this area is. Who knows? Who knows what it is? Let's have some little, uh, oh, branchy things and maybe uh, another big tree or two before we get coming too far this way. So I am just going to take a script liner brush. I'm going straight into my jar, the, the thin oil, and I'm going to put that down right next to that brown and black, black and brown, brown and black, whatever you prefer. And just stir that together. I need this to be thinner than the paint on the canvas. And I'd rather use the liquid clear over paint thinner. Paint thinner and liquid clear don't get along. And so if you get too much paint thinner onto the liquid clear that's on your canvas, you are going to have an interesting chemical reaction. Now, it's something everybody should do. That is a mistake we all need to make to learn that lesson, which is totally fine and a great way to learn. But I just want to have a few branchy, we may put some leaves on this, we may not, I don't know. Just a few little tree things. Sometimes these little fellows look like uh, little deer antlers or something sticking out. Dane actually says that when he does this on Bob's show, and I just think that's hysterical. Never been hunting like that. I don't I don't think I would enjoy it. I don't have the patience. I certainly enjoy venison. Don't 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 mishear what I'm saying. Um, but uh I, I just don't think I have the patience to uh to sit in a tree stand or out in the cold for very long. I just I, I just don't think that's something I would enjoy doing. Now I'd enjoy hanging out with the dudes and Guns and alcohol, probably not a great mix, but that's what I would have been interested in years ago. You know, I did the math. I, uh, as some of you may be aware, I do participate locally in a uh, great 12-step program that has helped me keep alcohol removed from my life. And it has been 1,875 days since I had my last alcoholic beverage. Now, in full transparency, when I quit drinking, I continued to self-medicate with uh, weed. And then here in Florida, uh, you could get yourself a medical prescription for marijuana. It was very, very mild, but I don't know how to use things like that in moderation. And so I way overused those. And uh, thankfully... Earlier this month, celebrated just over two years, 100% uh, substance-free like that. So, 
That's good stuff. I like those date calculators. I heard uh, somebody was actually watching a TV show and they had them go into a 12-step program and the person stood up and introduced themselves and said, I've, it's been such and such a time since their last drink. And I was just like, wow, that's really cool. I liked how it just it felt good how they said it. And so I was like, ah, I'm going to do figure out how long that's been for me as well. All right, I just want to put in some dark coverage here because I'm feeling a big tree about to jump out of my brush. And before that spirit leaves me, I just want to put in kind of a layer of dark here at the base of some of these trees. I'm just touching and pushing this in real quick. Just again, just it's the play between the colors. That's all we're getting. That's what gives us depth. It helps just give interest and you get to plant kind of the foots of some of uh, some of these little tree things we put in and maybe there's just a little different shape because these would certainly still cast a shadow and versus having to do a whole shadow i'd rather just do that so now let's put in a big old monster tree that maybe lives oh i think this one lives right here i told you it was a big one That is a big, beautiful tree right there. So that's just adding black, more midnight black, to this awesome brown and black mixture I had already. And so now I'm gonna just do it on this side, put another tree in, and we'll have something going on here at the foots here in a minute, so don't you worry about that at all. Maybe this tree has a big old arm that goes like that. Oh, maybe it's got another one that goes like that. Maybe that one had something like that happen. Who knows? Who knows? Your trees can do anything. Maybe this one has a little little arm kind of skewer sticking out and then one that goes this way. Oh, look, fatten up those bottoms of those trees. Make those look like giant, big old, strong, strong trees. Love that. Love that. All right, let's give some more arms to these. So I'm going to take a little more liquid clear, pick up a little bit of black next to it. I'm sort of just varying this color. I just want it to, to be dark. More importantly, very, very thin, so it'll whoosh, whoosh, come right off of my script liner brush. And I'm not going to do too many of these. I don't like to overdo with the branches. When you're painting this at home, you may like to have just blue coodles of individual branches. Awesome. Do that. Go for it. Whatever happens on your canvas, man, that's your world. Just make it happen. We'll put some, some foliage on this, so a lot of these will be covered. I'm going to put some leaves. We'll do some highlights on a few as we decide where the light hits the most. Oh, and there we go. There's just the idea of a few. Have some come off each direction, so it doesn't just look like... Your tree is just flat. Some are broken. Have some that are broken. Just put in little nubs here and there, just for interest. Oh, I love that. Love that, love that, love that. All right. So our dark color. Let's keep going with that. So I'm just tapping it in again. Just going to kind of put in... Put in some tops, some foliage cover on those. Like I said, we're going to put some highlight on a few of these where these edges would be kissing some of this light. But I also want to be careful that we can still see the, the lighter set we put way off in the distance. So I am being aware of that because I just want layer after layer after layer. You just have to be able to see some of it. That's all you got to do. Leave some space in here. Give some interest to what's going on there. Any parts you don't like, oh, drop another tree over it. 
But look, by just putting a little something on this side of that tree, doesn't that tree just feel like it gets shoved way back there in the distance? That's just, that feels so good when it happens at the end of your brush, I gotta tell you. There we go. So let's take, take a little step back. We're just going to take a step back. You know, before I get too fired up and wonky and crazy, let's put in kind of a, a little beam of light. What have I spilled all over this brush? Probably liquid clear. So now I have it on my hand. <laughs> Quick hydration break. Just a little cool water. So let's just put in a little uh, a little bit of titanium white. Again, before I get too carried away, I just I, I, I really love how Dana puts in this little just just he puts in this shot of white and then comes back and just ever so gently. Just bumps it back and forth. Again, this could be water. This could be a path through the woods. You decide what it is. You look at it. When you're painting, let it speak to you. When your friends and family are looking at things, let it speak to them. But I just love what that adds. And as we add some more things here, you're going to like that as well, I think. Because it'll just look like, whew, ah, there's the path to follow. I see what you're saying, my friend. All right, let's do another uh, kind of brighter row. Like maybe uh, some sunlight sneaking through there. Maybe it'll be a, a deeper reddish. I'm just building on the same color we got, this mosh pit of color here. May make some purple, adding some of this uh, even purplier, adding some crimson over to that uh, midnight black. Do whatever you like. Play with the colors. See what happens. If you don't like the way it turns out on your canvas, guess what? Paint something over it. It will still be fine. It will be fine. All right. Well, maybe yeah, I kind of like this color we're getting here. Well, we might darken something up there just a little bit. Let's change the flavor ever so slightly. Just change the flavor. Just changing the angle of the brush. Changing the pressure in my hand. Just to see what I'm getting. Cool. I'm digging that so far. All right, let's put in Let's put in a little bit of a darker kind of, putting in just some, setting kind of the, the lay of the land here. And we'll put some highlights on that, like I said. Just needing some dark, interesting shapes here so we can put some highlights on those as we're coming forward. That's really... That's the kind of thought process I'm having there. Just wanting something, something underneath. Something underneath. Kind of dig those shapes there. They're a little too uniform in some places, so I may touch a few of them just to knock that down a bit. Change the angle of my hand again. Let's change the flavor. Yeah, some of these I want to be darker. So I'm just going back in with a little darker color. We'll still do some highlights on there. I promised you. Don't fret. Those are coming. Don't you worry. Oh, yeah. Careful when things get to feeling good. It's easy to get carried away. Easy peasy, easy peasy to get carried away and overdo it. You can overdo it very quickly and almost kill the effect you were going for. So just be aware of that. Leave some dark areas so you can show the light. 
and we'll do something bright and cool, maybe another big tree or so down here at the front. All right, let's change to our brighter brush. I just want to knock most of the color out of that so we can whoop up a little different flavor of highlight color. Let's just grab a little more of that yellow ochre light mixture that we had early on to do the light, but change the flavor of that a little bit because it certainly wouldn't be as bright as the whole uh, sky out here. And let's just pick a few of these and see what we're getting as far as a highlight color goes, just because I, I just want a few kisses out here on the ends of a few of these that are just, just getting kissed by the light. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Maybe it's a few on the bottom here. Oh, maybe that light's just zinging just ever so barely up here. Maybe a little on this one. Why not? Don't overdo with the highlight either. I just want to give it some of that idea. Let's pick up a little more of that and do a little bit, a little bit out here on a few of these. Just be cautious. Leave some dark in between. I'm going to come back with a little fan brush and just nub out the edges of these a little bit, but I just want all these to look like millions and millions and millions of little leafy things. Changing the flavor here and there, just to vary that intensity of the color. That's all we're doing. Different flavors. See, I almost got carried away and just did too much color there, didn't I? I told you it was easy to have happen. Let some different angles happen in your hand. That'll just help curve and shape your, your ground cover here. Oh, isn't that good? Change the angle of that brush. Maybe you got a little different kind of bushy, flowery thing over here. I don't know. I don't know. You decide. You decide. Clean, dry fan brush. Don't need much here. Just want to make sure it's pretty soft. Just want to just sneak away a few of these edges here. Just be careful. Kind of like when we're doing a waterline with the knife. Don't overdo this. Don't overdo it. Just, just wanting to join them down to the dirt, the bank, the water, whatever this is right here. Just giving the indication that it's on kind of the, the slope of the land. That's all I'm thinking there. Nothing, nothing super magical because you got to be cautious when you go backwards. Whatever you touch out there starts to feel like the closest thing in. So then it's important to come back in here and do a little something like this just to sneak in and attach it to the ground back there where it is. Now you wouldn't be able to see it all. Just like a shoreline, a water line across the across the water, wherever you put water with a shoreline. So just be aware of that. I'm kind of liking what we've had happen here so far. Oh, and let's see. Let's just take a step back. Yeah, how about we have, well, maybe one more big tree. Can we take one on each side? Sure, why not? How long is our uh, video so far? Can I tell here? 38 and a half minutes almost? Okay, well, I'll wrap this up in the next few. I don't want to bore you to tears. Well, I love mornings that start this way. It was a little bit, a uh, little bit of kind of, I wouldn't call it, oh, what do you call it? Just some, uh, wasn't really fog, but it was definitely misty and right out our backyard. We live on a big, the, the whole runoff area, almost kind of, it, it can be a retention pond, but uh, even after hurricanes and tropical storms, it only holds water for a few hours because it really drains very, very well. And uh, out there in the bottom of it, because it's all forest off to the left, and there will be uh, just this mist comes out of the trees and just rolls down the, the side of the slope and the hill and across the bottom of that retention pond. And 
Oh, I just love it. I love it. I just feel like it's, well, quite frankly, it feels like God's breath. Just, whew, it's such a great place to sit and have a cup of coffee. And um, one of our sweet fur babies uh, crossed the Rainbow Bridge this past weekend. And um, I've never been present before when a vet has helped one of our pets do that. And we had a wonderful vet come to the house. And if you're local here in the Ocala Villages, Greater Marion, Sumter County area, North Sumter, I would probably expect her coverage area to be and need services of a mobile vet, especially if it's, if it's the end of the road and the pet, the, the, the kind decision really is to, to send that pet onto its sweet rest. Shoot me a message, drop in a comment. Hey, Dan, I need uh, the vet you're talking about. It's contact info. She's absolutely wonderful. Um, we've known her and her husband uh, through the local soccer communities stuff for several years now. Kids are near the same age and... Uh, it was such a beautiful, of course I'm sad, of course I miss her, um, but it was so peaceful and it really, absolutely no doubt about it was the kind and right thing to do. And oh, what a blessing to have that kind of service here in our local area. She's, she's just, oh, the, our other puppy just loved her as well. And, uh, we included him so he could say goodbye. And while of course my heart is sad, I know she's not hurting. And it was really a fast decline. About a week and a half, she stopped eating, did everything we thought we could and should. And to have Rebecca come and just take away her, her suffering and send her on to rest. Yes, of course, a difficult thing, but oh, when it's the right time, it's the right time. So I've just grabbed the palette knife and just wanted to put in some texture on this, these closer up trees. And I made too bright a color for this shadowy side. So just knocking some dark back over that. This is really awesome to do because if you put this kind of texture on it, number one, it makes those trees in the background look even further away and makes these close up ones really pretty cool to touch. So when this paint that I'm putting on with the knife like this dries over the next few weeks, anyone who comes to see this one or is here at the house and sees it hanging on the wall, they could absolutely touch this and it will feel like bark. That's what's really cool about it. So I'm just sneaking in some color. On the back side, just do something darker, a darker color. Maybe there's some reflected light back here. Maybe there's a water source off to the left of our little uh, foresty scene here. I don't know. Just giving it some shape and dimension. Let those overlap and the colors merge together a little bit because light's not going to hit that all, all together the same way. I kind of like that purpley color as reflection. So maybe we'll just add a touch over here in a few places. Not a lot. Don't need a lot. Don't need a lot. Just the idea. Do it quick. Do it quick. Little things like that will help you make friends with your knife as well. But there, so we've got some lighter reflection there. Let's kind of put something here and park our the foots of our trees there. Ooh, let's do some branches. We'll do a few branches out of that. I love doing a few little branches right out here in the front. Oh, it just it adds such a nice, again, just layer of interest. Just a layer of interest, have it cross a few branches, have it cross the other trees. Mm 
Every time you put something in front of something behind it, you are adding a layer of depth to your painting that will just give it such life. You will know exactly how you built it and the effect makes it just look like you've worked on it for weeks and maybe even longer. I mean, it's really such a fun thing to do. All right, let's put some leafy things on that one. Oh, maybe we got a few. Oh, I like that branch. I don't want to put too much on it to cover it up. We'll just give the idea out here. Again, we're getting one more layer of flavor. Let's put some, some leaves just there at the top just to kind of bring it in. Well, we don't want to see the tops of the tree. We're deeper in the woods than that. So let's just put in a few. Again, let it be able to see through what you're doing. And cool. We need a couple of little kisses of a highlight color, I think, on there. Just a few. Just a few. Just a few to say, hey, I'm here. Show me some love of the highlighty color, please. There we go. Let's close in this bottom with some footy things, and we're going to call this one a done deal. We just need to plant our big old tree down here. Sound effects always help. Never doubt the sound effect. It's the power of the sound effect. When you do them in class or in front of your friends and family, they will make funny faces at you, but then they will see that it works. <laughs> and they do will make some of those funny sounds. Let's do, let's just make a pinkier, a little deeper, just a little color to draw the eye down this direction. Oh, maybe there's a little bit of this merged up just on this side of that tree. Wouldn't see a lot here. Just a little bit. Gentle touch, gentle touch here. Gentle touch. With that, my friends, I am going to whoop up a little uh, light color to sign it with. So I need a little... Uh, Clear oil, let's use, oh, let's just use that gold, yellow, beautiful yellow ochre color. You've seen me sign these before. I just do a D, held up by a W, and those are my initials. So from one humble painter to another, I hope, drag out your paints, give this a go. Do shoot me a message if you're enjoying these videos. Um, I'd love to see any paintings that you're working on. Give this a go. You can make this work. It's Thursday here. I'm going to be off to my men's group here shortly. And since it's the last Thursday of January, we're going to eat together. I love to break bread with these guys. And it's my day to cook. So I'm off to the kitchen. I believe, yep, today's menu is meatball spaghetti pie super salad that will change your life if you let it and some garlic bread so thanks for checking out uh, progress not perfection i'll see you on the next show have an awesome day i love you